What is happening people? It is Brian Alzer with NeverState.com and welcome to today's video where I want to give you guys seven of my favorite sandbag training workouts to hopefully help you guys get shredded stronger as well as more functional. Now, if you're not already currently doing some sort of sandbag training in your strength routine, I would highly, highly recommend that you do so because out of all the strength and conditioning equipment out there, you're rarely gonna find something that is more effective, has more variability, it is absolutely humbling, super, super tough, and it is dirt cheap because you can make them yourself, which means there's no excuse for anyone to not have one or two to help enhance their training. Now, if you do need some help on how to make your own sandbag or how to pick up one of these sandbags, or you want more in-depth information of why this is so valuable to your other training, then make sure you click the link for the video in the description box down below because that is more of my basic sandbag video that's gonna answer a lot of those questions for you. Today's video is all about workouts and workouts that you can do and each and every single one of them that I'm gonna give you is designed to be between 10 and 12 minutes. So there's absolutely no reason why you can't throw that at the end of one of your strength days or you can throw a couple of them together on a completely separate GPP type of conditioning day. If you do so, make sure that you don't throw that day right up next to one of your other strength days because sandbags do take more out of you than you think they're going to and your results might not be as desired. Now finally, before we get into the actual workouts, I need to answer the inevitable question of how heavy of a sandbag should I be using? And that's really a tough question to answer because there is no ratio like sandbag to deadlift ratio or anything like that. In fact, I know a lot of people who can deadlift like 600 pounds but really, really struggle with a 200 pound sandbag because it's just different. A sandbag is a variable and replicates things you'd pick up in the real world as opposed to a deadlift, which is an absolute perfectly balanced barbell with perfectly calibrated plate. It's, it's a completely different world. That said, most people watching this video are gonna get the most use out of two different weight sandbags. The first of which is going to be one that is set just a little bit below their body weight. And they're gonna use it for exercises like sandbag over shoulder or a sandbag get up, things like that. And then they're gonna want a second sandbag that is set at just a little bit more than their body weight, which is gonna cover most of their carries as well as any type of loading events over a bar or onto a platform. Now do remember if you are a competitive strongman or you have plans to be a competitive strongman, you are never going to see a sandbag in competition that is lighter than your body weight. So your weights are gonna to need to be heavier than the average person. And also if you are just an average lifter or a power lifter who is very strong, realize that the learning curve on this is a little bit steeper than you might be realizing. So you might need something like a beginner bag uh, kind of to warm up to something closer to your body weight. Now, of course, since these are relatively cheap to make, ideally you would have a couple at your disposal, but if you are on a budget, there's no reason why you can't buy a bigger sandbag and then just manipulate the amount of sand in it to change the weight. However, I am gonna tell you from experience that uh, changing the weight of a sandbag regularly, especially during a workout is it gets old pretty fast. And again, if you need help building your own sandbag or learning how to pick it up or just the basics, make sure you click on the link for the video in the description box down below. And on to the workouts. All right guys, so the very first one that I wanna to talk to you about is affectionately called the Carry and Throw EMOM. Now, if you don't know what EMOM means, that's just an acronym for every minute on the minute. And all that means is that when you begin exercising, that is when the clock begins also. Now, since it is every minute on the minute, that means if you have to do 10 push-ups in a minute, the clock starts and you do your 10 push-ups. When your push-ups are done, you get the remainder of that minute to rest, but once that second hand meets the 12 again, it is time for set two and you have 10 more push-ups to get done in a minute. You get the remainder of the minute to rest, okay? That is what every minute on the minute or EMOM stands for and we'll be using that a lot during this video. So with all that in mind, when you start your clock, what I want you to do is pick up a sandbag that is right around your body weight, maybe slightly lighter, and then you're gonna carry that bad boy 50 feet to the finish line at which point you're going to toss him over your shoulder. Then you're gonna proceed, turn around, pick him back up, carrying him back to the starting line, at which point you're gonna throw him back over your shoulder where he is going to lie while you take the remainder of the minute to rest. Now, for most athletes, this is going to take somewhere between 30 to 40 seconds, which is only gonna leave you 20 to 30 seconds left to rest before it is time to pick that bag up for round two. Now, you are going to do this 10 to 12 rounds. If it's too easy, just make the sandbag heavier or add more rounds. If it is too hard, make it a little bit lighter or cut your number of rounds. And the second sandbag workout that I wanna to talk to you guys about is called the load and plank. And again, we are dealing with an EMOM situation. So it's gonna be every minute on the minute 
for 10 to 12 minutes. Now, ideally the sandbag for this workout would be slightly heavier than your body weight. And for women, your bar height is gonna be 48 inches. And for men, it's going to be 52 because those are very standard bar heights at any normal strongman competition. Also, ideally for this workout, you would either have a yoke or a platform that you could load this bag to that was very, very stable. However, I know there's gonna be a lot of people that are just gonna be using a bar sitting across their power rack, which is an awesome option. The only thing that I will say is do realize that if you are using a barbell and you knock it out of the J cups and it just goes shattering on the ground, that's not the most spectacular thing for your barbell. So you might wanna use a piece of PVC pipe or a wooden dowel or even just stretch like an elastic band across at the height that you need. Anyway, set it up however you need to. But at the beginning of every single minute for 10 to 12 minutes, you are going to do three sandbag loads over top of that bar. Now, this is gonna take you a little bit because you're gonna to need to hustle around to the other side get down in position and pick it up and throw it back over. Now, whatever time you do have remaining of that minute, I want you to sit in the plank position. Now, I do say the remainder of the minute, but I would like to see you come out of the plank, ideally about 10 seconds shy of the end of the minute so that you can kind of be set up for your sandbags to go when that second hand hits the 12. Top of a minute for 10 to 12 minutes, three sandbag loads, plank for your rest. All right, so workout number three is affectionately called the sandbag get up ladder. Now a sandbag get up is very similar to a Turkish get up, except you have a sandbag sitting on your chest and it is terrible. Now for this, I would tell you to try to get to a sandbag as close as possible to your body weight. However, that is going to be extremely, extremely challenging. So you might need one a little bit lighter. Anyway, when you do have that sandbag, you're gonna get in front of a clock set for 10 minutes. Now, minute one, you're going to do one sandbag get up. Minute two, you're going to do two sandbag get-ups. Minute three, you're gonna do three sandbag get-ups. And minute four, you're gonna do four. Minute five, you're gonna do five sandbag get-ups. Now, minute six is where it gets tricky because you're gonna start working your way back down. You're gonna repeat the five. So minute six, you're doing five sandbag get-ups. Minute seven, you're doing four and then three and two and one to complete the 10 minutes. And uh, it is absolutely, absolutely brutal. Now, if you find these particularly easy or you are a get-up beast, and you want to continue climbing the ladder. So when you get to minute six, if you wanna do six sandbag get-ups, and then minute seven, you wanna do seven, and you wanna keep working your way up, then by all means, please do that, and you are a monster, and I take my hat off to you. You should also probably record yourself trying to do a sandbag get-up with a sandbag of your body weight and show it to your significant other so they can laugh at you. All right, so workout number four is called Orbit Carries, and we're going back to the every minute on the minute time scheme for this one, and you're gonna run this for 10 to 12 minutes, and you're probably gonna need a sandbag that is slightly less than your body weight, but when your clock does start at the top of every single minute, you are going to do a sprawl burpee on top of the sandbag. Basically here, what you're going to do is drop out and touch your chest to the sandbag while your legs kick out, stand up, shuffle a quarter of a turn, do the same thing, shuffle a quarter of a turn, do that four times until you are back to where you started at the beginning of the sandbag. Once you've done that, you're gonna pick up the sandbag and do five sandbag squats. This is gonna to start to fry your legs, at which time you're gonna take off for a 50 foot carry, drop the sandbag and get the remainder of the minute to rest. Now, again, you're probably looking at about 20 to 30 seconds worth of rest. So make sure you breathe fast because this is gonna to start to suck around round four or five. So the fifth workout I wanna talk about is something that I like to call the 30s. Now for this, you are going to need a clock set for 10 minutes and you're going to need to be able to see it because what's gonna happen is once you start that thing for your first 30 seconds, you are going to complete as many sandbag over shoulder as you possibly can, just go full out. But as soon as that clock ticks over to the next 30 seconds, now you are doing as many sandbag over bar as you possibly can in that 30 seconds. Again, completely full out. Now the third 30 seconds, you're gonna pick up that bag and you are either going to go for a walk for 30 seconds or you can stand in place if you don't have a whole lot of room to move and just march or you can do sandbag squats but that thing needs to be bear hugged to your chest for that entire 30 seconds and then finally you get 30 seconds to rest. Now you're gonna end up doing this for five rounds so it's gonna be 10 total minutes and trust me you are going to hate your life so I would recommend using a sandbag that is a little bit lighter than your body weight. 
The sixth workout I'd like to talk to you guys about today is called the Sandbag Shuttle, and it can be run multiple different ways, but the easiest of which is if you have multiple sandbags. So let's say, for instance, you have three or four sandbags, so what you're gonna do is set up a 50-foot course. At one end, you're gonna line up all of the sandbags from lightest to heaviest, and then at the other end, you are going to be standing. Then, at the command of go, you're gonna take off, pick up your lightest sandbag, sprint back with it, drop it at the finish line, run back to those sandbags, pick up the next heaviest, sprint back, drop it off the finish line, go to the next heaviest bag, and finally finish with the heaviest bag. Take two minutes rest, run that five times. Trust me, that will absolutely destroy you. It's just like a normal strongman medley that you'd see in many, many contests around. However, if you only have one, strong, one sandbag, then that's obviously not gonna work as well. So what I would tell you to do is set up a course, again, 50, 60, 70 feet long, whatever you feel comfortable with, you at one end, sandbag at the other end. What you're gonna do is at the command of go, take off, grab that sandbag, carry it back, and then you're basically doing a wind sprint. Just like in any high school sport, you're gonna sprint back to the starting line or the finish line, whatever you wanna call it, then sprint back to your bag, pick it up, carry it to the other end of the line, then do a wind sprint, pick up your bag, carry it, do a wind sprint. Now, if you find yourself doing this method, what I would tell you to do is try to complete as many rounds as possible in a 10 minute time frame. Try to keep track of that number so future workouts, you can try to beat your previous score. Sandbag shuttle, it is a puke-tastic time. And the seventh sandbag workout that I'd like to talk to you guys about is affectionately called the WAN because it's named after my brother-in-law, John, who came up with it, uh, and it is absolutely brutal. So uh, it is, again, every minute on the minute for pretty much as long as you can last, because it's not gonna be very long. But what you're gonna do is at the start of every single minute, you're gonna perform three sandbag burpee shoulder sandbag over shoulder. Anyway, you're, you're gonna do a burpee and you're gonna throw the sandbag over top of shoulder. You're gonna do it three times. As soon as you've done those three reps, you're gonna pick up the sandbag, you're gonna take off 50 feet, you're gonna drop it, and rest the remainder of the minute. I'm not gonna lie to you, this is absolutely brutal. I was watching him do it the other day. It made me wanna throw up, so if you guys really don't like yourselves that much, maybe you guys wanna give that one a try. Remember, it is called the one because of him, not because of me. Anyway guys, there you go. That is what I have for you today. If you guys are not using some sort of sandbag training to help your barbell training, you are doing yourself a huge disservice. It is the most functional thing you can possibly do in the gym. It is super versatile. You can do it anywhere. You can have it at home. It can be conditioning. It can be strength. You can get shredded with it. It is an awesome, awesome tool that you can make for literally dollars. So guys, please, please take advantage of it. Get stronger, get bigger, get faster, get leaner. All these things can happen just because of a stupid bag filled with sand. Guys, I truly, truly thank each and every single one of you in all the ways that you guys support the channel, whether it be watching, liking, subscribing, sharing, or if you guys buy programs, buy t-shirts, help with supplements, whatever it is that you guys do, I just can't tell you how much it means to me, and I thank you so, so much. I was actually talking to one of my buddies the other day, and he was like, man, you get to live your dream, and I'm like, absolutely, and is 100% because of the support of people like you and that does not go unnoticed. So guys, I thank you so, so much and I hope this will be helpful to some of you. Please add sandbag training and you will not be sorry. I will catch up with you guys later in the week, hopefully with a pretty cool training video, but until I do, go have something amazing in your lives. Keep working hard, people. Be nice to each other, please. I'll see you then.